Hey there kids, welcome to another math lesson. This is for fifth grade Eureka Math, module three, lesson 13, homework. And as always, you should have already watched the problem set video and you should already have completed this homework. This is just a check, concept check. Did you get it? How'd you do? Check your answers. And hopefully if you got it wrong, you'll see what you did wrong and then you'll do better going forward. Okay. The objective here in this lesson is at the bottom of the page, use fraction benchmark numbers to assess reasonableness of addition and subtraction equations. So we're just trying to figure out, are these answers reasonable or what's close? What's this, you know, greater than one, less than one, what would be the right answer? So uh, we're going to circle them. It's pretty easy on the front with just circling, but here's why. Okay. The first one, one half plus four ninths. So when you think about half, where does half fall, and what exactly is half of 9? Well, if half of 10 is 5 and half of 8 is 4, then I have a little bit less because half of 9 would be 4.5. So if I have exactly a half and a little bit less than half, then I would have a little bit less than 1 for my answer. So hopefully the key is here in this one. Hopefully you understood what that was. You want to really be able to identify where is the half. For the next one, if I have 5 eighths and 3 fifths, so if I have 4 eighths, that would be half. So I have more than half here. And if I have 3 fifths, half of 5 would be 2 and a half. So I have more than half and more than half. So easily this one is greater than 1. For this one, you have to look at the size of the fractions that you're dealing with because one and one fifth is pretty small. Think about the size of the pieces of the denominator. And if you have one fifth versus one third, this is actually a bigger fraction than this one. So if I have one and a little tiny bit, but I'm taking away more than I had of the extra, then I'm gonna go down below and I will have less than one. Four, four and three fifths minus three and three fourths, uh, you're going to be taking away, just like we did before. You can think about your four minus three, so that gives you the one, but now I have, again, comparing the size of the fractions. 3 fifths minus 3 fourths. So I'm going to be taking away a bigger amount than I had before. So I'm going to be going below 1. And so your answer is less than 1. For number 2, now we're not just dealing with 1. We're dealing with a half. So are the following expressions greater than or less than 1 half? Circle the correct answer. Same thinking process here. What is the sum when I have a tiny little bit that is one out of five, it's less than half. Most of these are gonna be, remember, we're, we're not dealing with one, we're dealing with a half. So we may not even get up to a half. So I have a little tiny piece, one out of five, plus, like it says in the problem set video, think about the quarters. So where will I be? I'll still be less than half, because if I have a quarter, but less than that, I will be ending up with less than the half for my final answer. How about this one? Six sevenths is almost the whole thing, but it's not the whole thing. Minus one out of six parts, which is really quite small, so you're not really taking that much away from something that's almost one. So your final answer is greater than a half. A lot of students will actually solve all these, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking you through them so that you can see, hey, you can just kind of estimate. Could you actually sit there and solve them? I guess you could, but nobody really wants to do that, and you certainly don't have to on this lesson. It's just assessing reasonableness is our goal. Um, okay, so we have one and one-seventh, so just a little bit over one. One-seventh is a very tiny amount, but then five-sixth is a a pretty big amount. That's almost the whole thing. So if I have just slightly more than one, but I take away almost one, that's going to put me down here less than half. Next one, four sevenths. Again, I have more than half. Half of seven is going to be three and a half. Okay. 
plus a tiny little bit. So if I have more than half already and I add to that, greater than half. Okay, at the bottom we've got greater than, less than, or equal to uh, symbols. And so you just have to be reasonable about the size of your fractions. It gets a little bit challenging, so hang in there. So if I have my whole numbers and I have 5 plus 2, that makes 7. Okay, That's still less than 8. However, we have to consider these two fractions compared with this one. 4 fifths is almost all the pieces out of 5 just like three-fourths is almost all the pieces out of four. But then I have a whole bunch more, two out of three pieces, that is almost all the pieces out of three. Okay, so I have five, six, seven. Then I have, this would make almost the eight. So then I add a little bit more to that. Okay, I am finally to the eight when I take my seven plus this one that's almost one whole and this would bump me over eight but not by much. This three-fourths compared to the total amount of these two fractions, this side here would be more or have a greater value than the total of these two fractions. Okay, and we're already shorter by one. So we, what we need to do is we need to make up like one and more, three-fourths, from the difference between the five plus two, which only makes seven, and I have to get up to the eight and have three-fourths, and that's just not enough with those two fractions. Even though they're pretty big fractions, it's just not enough. Okay, for the subtraction now, now you have to think about, <laughs> here's where I start, and I have to take this away. So you really have to reason it out. I have three and slightly more than a half, okay? And if you have three minus two, that'll give you one, but I still have to take away three-fifths. This is slightly more than a half. This is slightly more than a half. So I have to take that away, okay? If I have one and four-sevenths, which is more than half, and three-fifths, which is more than half, and I'm, I'm taking these things away, so I'm literally making this smaller. This side with the one and four-sevenths and three-fifths is going to end up having more, not only because we're adding, but because of what, how much we're taking away and how much we started with. This really has a lot. It's, it's not quite four. It's between three and four. But I'm not taking away... <coughs> Excuse me. I am taking away two and three-fifths, but the amount I'm taking away puts me less on this side than all this stuff that I'm putting together. I end up with a lot more over here. Okay. Addition on both sides. Four and a half plus one and four-ninths. So I've got easily the five here, okay? I have actually a half, and then I have just below a half here. So that's almost, almost one, almost one for six, okay? Very close. This side has five plus, uh, it's got a pretty good amount, but what is half of 18? It's nine eighteenths. And 13 eighteenths is not quite as close as these are. So this side ends up giving us more on C. And then for D, we've got 10 and 3 eighths minus 7 and 3 fifths. And again, we're, we're looking at how much we're taking away. Okay, so I, if you think about the 10 minus the 7, that gives you 3. And then we've got a 3 there. So now it becomes that I have this fraction for 3 eighths, which is just less than half, minus... Three-fifths, which is just more than half. So I'm going to have less than three. If I subtract all that, I'm going to have less than three here. And this one starts with three and adds more to it, so you, it gives you more on the right. And again, make sure you keep your symbol straight. The bigger side has two dots. The lesser side has one. So if you're going to uh, make these symbols, the greater side has the open mouth eating the you know, cookies or whatever it is that you want to uh, think about. We used to do an alligator years ago. Okay, 
Now we're thinking some more. Is it true that 5 and 2 thirds minus 3 and 3 fourths equals 1 plus 2 thirds plus 3 fourths? Looks pretty crazy, so let's try to lay this out. Now you can, you can show your work. Like the other side, I didn't show anything because we're kind of assessing reasonableness, but this side, we have to prove it. So I would rewrite it. And I would use one of my newer strategies to show how I can get an addition problem. So if I have five minus three, that gives me two, but I still have the two thirds that's part of my whole. And then I have to take away the three fourths, right? Because I haven't dealt with that yet. <coughs> Excuse me again, jeez. Okay, so uh, for the next step, I need to take away what I can. So I'm gonna skip over the two thirds for a minute and I'm just gonna take the three fourths away from the two. So that would take me down into the one, now I'm getting closer, and one fourth. Leave the two thirds alone and put the one fourth back. Some students will be like, oh, I don't understand what you're doing. Let's take the order of these. I'm just gonna move the two thirds out of the way and I'm gonna take the three fourths and put it here. Two minus three fourths. There's one and a fourth. I still have to put the two thirds back. So this is just a different way of looking at it. Remember with addition, you can move the numbers around in any order. So now I have two thirds plus one plus one fourth. Two thirds plus one plus one fourth. Two thirds plus one plus what? No. Okay, so is it true? No. And I'm proving it because it's not supposed to be plus three fourths. We have to take away the three fourths, which ends up eliminating the three fourths altogether. You should end up with one fourth. That's your difference. So this is what you would get if you were gonna turn this subtraction into an addition problem. You don't have to solve it. You just have to prove it. Okay, number five. This one is kind of ugly. Um, okay, a tree limb hangs. We, we had arguments about this one years ago. Oh my gosh, we went on and on. Okay, a tree limb hangs five and a fourth feet from a telephone wire. The city trims back the branch before it grows within two and a half feet of the wire. Will the city allow the tree to grow two and three fourths more feet? Um, this is one of the worst questions in the whole program. Make a tape diagram, you got your five and a fourth feet, you've got your, uh, uh, you've got your tree branch, okay? So if you've got like a tree and the limb, and you know how the, the PG&E or whoever is your power supplier, they come along and they cut the branch and they just go zip, and it doesn't matter if it's ugly or the tree is cut off on top, they just cut it, okay? So it's this is a real thing. So the problem is, if they will cut the tree branch before it grows within two and a half feet of the wire. Will the city allow the tree to grow two and three fourths more feet? So they're saying like, is this true? Or do these numbers add up? Will it work? But it's before. Key term is before. So that's the problem here. So when you set it up, let's say you have your five and a fourth feet and you wanna find the difference between either one of these, but basically we really have to figure out this two and a, two and a half feet uh, distance because will they allow it to um, grow within that? So if you just take away your five minus two and a half, that's gonna leave you with two and a half, okay? Five minus two, that's three, but three minus a half, that's two and a half. So we end up with our two and a half, but we have to put back the one fourth. So instead of having two and a half, change it to two and two fourths. And you get two and three fourths. Now here's where this is why it was such a nightmare for a lot of kids and why it doesn't make any sense uh, to a lot of people. If you get the exact answer, will they allow it to grow two and three fourths more feet? The answer is no, okay? And some students will, will argue and they'll say, well, yes, they, they can get, you know, two and three fourths feet exactly, but they have to cut it before it grows within. And, and the key word, the one that really matters here is the word before. The answer is no, because they won't let it go 
the full distance. That's the big idea. And I'm sure they'll be there with their inch ruler measuring it exactly, and they'll be there that day. Bzz, okay, it finally got there with that one last centimeter. Anyway, the answer is no. Uh, the city will trim the tree. Okay, so they try to watch out. They don't want any power outages before it grows within two and a half feet. Okay, so I hope you understand that one. It's kind of crazy, uh, but that's the answer. Okay, last one. Mr. Kreider wants to paint two doors, key, and several shutters. It takes two and one eighth gallons of paint to coat each door, very important, and one and three fifths gallons of paint to coat all the shutters. If Mr. Kreider buys three two-gallon cans of paint, does he have enough to complete the job? Lots of calculations that you need to do and just slow it down and think about it for a second. How much paint does he have? Okay, I want to know if all the paint he has will be enough to cover these things. So three two-gallon cans of paint should be a really easy problem for you. Three times two, he has six gallons altogether. He has to do how many doors at two and one eighth? Two of them. Don't forget there are two doors. Two and an eighth gallons for each door. Here's a door, here's a door. And one and three fifths gallons for all the shutters I know it doesn't look like the right amount, and I don't care. That's okay. We're just showing part to whole relationship. There are three parts, shutters and two doors. So what is the total of all this, and is it greater than or less than six? That's what we need to know. So this is a pretty easy addition problem. You can do it without even writing anything because your common denominator is already there. 2 and 1 eighth and 2 and 1 eighth would make 4 and 2 eighths. There go the lights. It's on. The show is about to begin or end or something. It's going to end really soon. Okay, 4 and 2 eighths plus the 1 and 3 fifths. And now if you, okay, now we can kind of assess reasonableness if you want to. You don't actually have to calculate at this point you should start saying how does this compare with six gallons and do we have enough okay four plus one being five and then two eighths being much less than half it's a quarter okay and three fifths being only slightly more than a half then i know that um, he has just enough so my answer really is yes he has just enough. Click subscribe and come back again. I hope to help you on your math videos. Uh, math homework, math videos. Don't, you can make math videos too. Uh, yes, he has just enough to finish the job. And if you want to finish this whole thing out, what I would do is I would simplify this and turn it into four and a fourth before I do any calculations because four and five have a lower denominator. And if you have to use 40, gosh, that's gonna be a lot of work. So you can change these to 20ths and actually get the answer, which is not the objective of this lesson. Um, but you, you can actually do all the work if you want. So here's your five and here's your 12, and then you would have four and 17 20ths compared to, I'm sorry, five. My bad. Five, four plus one is five. Five and 17 twentieths compared with six. And then you can see that six is actually greater. So super close, but yeah, he has enough paint. So anyway, hope this is helpful and we'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.